Broadcasts of Hiki no are made possible by the support of viewers like you. Mahalo and by Bank of Hawaii Foundation, investing in Hawaii's future by promoting collaboration, critical thinking, and other 21st century skills through Hiki no. Kamehameha Schools, empowering Hawaiian keiki to explore, discover, and inspire. ABC Stores, a local company helping to transform education and develop Hawaii's workforce through bold learning initiatives like Hiki No. Next on Hiki No, stories from across our island chain. When my dad's gone, you can tell that something's wrong. Like if you didn't know, if you were a friend of my brother, say, and you didn't know his dad was gone, you could tell something's wrong because he might be a little bit more aggressive because of it. Learn about the effects of deployment on military family members. Find out what it took for an extremely shy girl to finally break out of her shell. Experience the Miss Kauai Filipino pageant through the eyes of a contestant. Check out a new tactic to promote pedestrian safety in Waianae. Learn about an effort to reduce harmful fishing line discarded into our oceans. Find out how Native Hawaiian students on Maui are learning about their culture through the cultivation and preparation of taro. And learn about a place that provides workforce training for young people who are homeless, incarcerated, or just looking for guidance. Stay tuned for these stories, and get to know the Hiki No teachers from some of the schools represented in this show. All on this episode of Hiki No. Can do. We're here on the campus of Ali Umano Middle School in the Salt Lake District on the island of Oahu. At our school, the media program is known as Panther Vision. Mr. Chris Fakuri is the advisor for the program, which he started 15 years ago. He used his background as a social studies teacher and as a student at Leeward College's TV Pro program to develop our live daily morning broadcast. Through Panther Vision, his students have gained a real-world media production experience. While he's not in the studio, you'll find Mr. Fakuri out in the ocean paddling canoe. Many students here are military dependents stationed at Joint Base Pearl Harbor Hickam. This story addresses the effects that deployment and other assignments have on them. When my dad's gone, you can tell that something's wrong. Like if you didn't know, if you were a friend of my brother, say, and you didn't know his dad was gone, you could tell something's wrong because he might be a little bit more aggressive because of it. And that's not necessarily his fault. He's younger and trying to deal with it. But after a while, it gets a little bit better. Deployment is one aspect of military life that may drastically change a family's dynamics, such as routines and emotionality. One example of this is the Evans Ohana. Mr. Evans is a colonel in the Air Force and is currently deployed. The impacts I see on my kids um, when my husband is gone for long periods of time is that it's harder for my eight-year-old to understand why their dad had to go and whether or not he really had to or what would happen if he didn't go. It's a little bit easier for older kids to deal with the absence and to understand that it is part of his job and he doesn't have a choice and he didn't want to do this. So it's, it's easier for the older kid to understand and also deal with. It's harder for the eight-year-old to deal with. Uh, he's been having nightmares since, since his dad left. I just think that age, they don't quite understand um, in fact, he has said to me, did he really have to leave? So I don't think they quite understand that that is their job and that while you can love your job and still, you know, not, not want to be away from your family, but still love your job. And the younger they are, the harder I think they have understanding that. While deployment has its downsides, there are some positives as well. Being in a military family and undergoing these periods of change can have its benefits in the end. I've noticed several times that parents are really aware of the effect of uh, deployment on their kids. Um, many students um, exhibit maybe different behaviors than they might under normal circumstances. Um, on the other hand, I think there is a lot of responsibility grown in young kids when their parents are gone. Sometimes they have to take care of siblings or they have to help a parent around the household. Sometimes they have to step up and do things that they might not otherwise do if the whole household was intact. As kids get older, they start to see the big picture of military life and how constant change can positively influence them. Um, I feel like being in a military family, you get a lot of experiences you wouldn't get otherwise. 
Like growing up, I've lived in many different places that most people haven't. I've lived in Korea, I've lived in Hawaii. Not everyone can say they've done that. So I feel like being in a military family is just a very big chance to learn something new or meet new people. In spite of the challenges brought on by deployment, the overall character of a family may be strengthened. This is Michaela Mila from Aliamana Middle School for Hiki No. Hiki no is on Instagram. For special Hiki no content, follow us on Instagram at Hiki no Can Do. We take you now to the Hilo District of Hawaii Island for a story about a shy girl who finally came out of her shell when she discovered her passion. I developed shyness because I had such a distrust for everyone. Growing up, Jody Ortiz struggled to open up to people. Even simple interactions were difficult for her. Usually, me or one of the other people in my best friend group had to speak for her. Jody really showed her antisocial traits when uh, someone went to go hug her goodbye or hello, because uh, she really, she could not hug for the life of her. She just felt so socially awkward hugging people, even family members. But this level of shyness was something I've never seen before. You could tell by her demeanor that she um, was not very outgoing. Whenever maybe we corrected her on something or she laughed, she would just cover her face. Um, I guess the term is act all shame. When I did like find that distrust, I started to see everyone else as like a disappointment. So I didn't want to open or build new bridges because I knew it was just going to fall apart. When Jody entered her freshman year at Hilo High School, she decided to push herself out of her shell. So she signed up for K-Vikes, the after-school TV production club. She didn't think much of it at first. I expected them to just give me a camera and then just work, like take pictures and then do whatever. She was just so quiet that even when we're fully involved, getting ready with production, and then you think, well, where's Jody? And there she is just sitting at her chair, just waiting for instruction. So that, that was quite interesting when she first joined. But when the club needed a new technical director, Jody found herself manning the switchboard during live broadcasts. And that's when things began to change. As a technical director, she really flourished. Her hands were lightning fast. We usually call her Quick Shot Jody because she would just get the right shot. Our live stream just got 100% better. With that, she just blossomed. Her attitude changed, her demeanor changed, the way she spoke changed, the way that she started to interact with people changed. They shared deep, ex like personal experiences with me and they trusted me. So they would share something so personal to me and then I would say something that was personal to me to them. And that's the type of trust that I developed for like for people. As she opened up to her classmates, Jody found herself developing confidence and leadership skills due to her having trust. She's influenced me to like try harder, like cause she's shown me like stuff that I can do. And she always tells me like, even if I mess up, she always tells me, you're doing great, it's okay. Like just keep on going. When it came time for elections, it was just a no brainer that Jody would be elected president. In order to get over your shyness, you definitely need to build trust. This is Leilani Guerrero from Hilo High School for Hiki No. Here's another story about a young woman who overcame shyness. It's an autobiographical feature by a recent Hiki no graduate from Kauai High School, who is one of the three young journalists honored this year with the Gwen Eiffel Fellowship, named after the iconic PBS NewsHour anchor who passed away in 2016. next Miss Hawaii Filipina 2019. I remember being that little girl sitting in the audience watching the beautiful contestants hoping that one day that would be me on stage. And every day of constant practice and walking in heels, practicing my speech, working on my talent, I always believed that I was one step closer to achieving that dream of mine. You may be thinking, Miss Kauai Filipina is just another pageant. All you have to do is walk around and look pretty. I wanted to feel the cultural experience and become closer to my heritage. I did this pageant to share a story, my mom's story. Back in the Philippines, 
Me and my parents would pick vegetables in the farm to sell at the market to fund for my college. My mom kept saying, Aganos ka, ta aganos kami met. Be patient and will be patient too. I got the opportunity to use my beauty and brains in scholarship pageants to help out my family as well. I wanted to be able to attain higher education to make my parents proud and create a better life for my future. Just like my mom, as much as I wanted to go to the mainland for college, I knew how expensive it would be. To help out my mother, I was set on winning the Miss Kauai Filipina Scholarship to help pay for college. I also wanted to share with the audience how in my family, money was never the goal. It was their push to help further my knowledge, education, and myself. For my talent competition, I put myself in my mom's shoes picking rice from the rice fields and showing the judges how much Filipinos are hard workers and how they persevere for their dreams. But there were always times of discouragement. What if the judges see me but don't feel this determination in me? I've had moments of self-doubt. I wanted to win so badly but felt so unqualified to sing and felt like I wasn't pretty enough. It also took a toll on me competing against friends because as much as I wanted to support them, I was set on achieving my goal to winning. I felt most doubtful for my speech portion. I wanted to make sure the judges felt my passion and show them that I am worthy of this title. I know my name, of course. So... Yeah. On pageant night, I blanked out on stage in front of 800 plus people, the judges, the whole committee. I cried my makeup off the moment I got up stage after my speech because in that moment I knew I lost my chances to achieving my dream of becoming Miss Kauai Filipina. Although I was competing against beautiful and smart girls, I realized the only person I was actually competing against was myself. I had so much support behind me and all I had to do was believe in myself more. And it wasn't a matter of win or lose, but a matter of finding the Filipina I was. I am still the same go-getter, the same believer, and the same proud Filipina. I began the pageant win. At the end, I came out as first runner-up, which is not so bad for someone who forgot their speech on stage. What I took from this experience was that Miss Kauai Filipina is way more than getting a crown and sash. Being a part of this pageant taught me my heritage of cultural values of family, strong work ethic, and having a vision for the future. Here at Wayana High School, we have many teachers who express themselves in different ways. Some dance, write, or even paint. But for Mr. Furumoto, his passion for turning 2D designs into 3D art really sets him apart from his colleagues. Mr. Furumoto likes the challenge of designing new things and being able to manipulate it into anything he wants. He loves 3D printing as he is able to physically hold something that he is very proud of. The following story was created by students from Waianae High School on the leeward coast of Oahu. This story shows us a new attempt at decreasing pedestrian accidents. Is he going to stop? In August 2019, the Hawaii Department of Transportation installed four raised crosswalks near White and I High School to promote pedestrian safety. When I used to cross the street, I would see like all these cars flying by. But now with the new crosswalks, it kind of gives them a reason to slow down. The reason why we implemented these uh, crosswalks, raised crosswalks in this area is because we have heard from our community over and over again something needs to be done to address the safety issues on Farrington Highway, especially for our kids in this corridor. This is the third attempt to protect pedestrians in White and I. In 2016, the White and I community implemented reflective flags at every crosswalk to help with visibility. So the flags was a great community initiative. Um, and that was something I supported. I actually helped with that uh, program. Um, the problem with those flags were that they were being stolen 
um, very often, and so to replace them became burdensome. We wanted something that would be consistent, and I think with these raised crosswalks, um, you know, the raised crosswalks won't uh, die from batteries, right? Not having batteries in it or solar or whatever it is. It's going to be there forever. Especially like during night, you couldn't really see them. Even though they're orange, you really couldn't see them. But with the new crosswalks, you know, the, car the cars are forced to slow down. Between Waianae High School and Kamaile Academy, about 2,600 students are present during the school day in the stretch of a mile. And keeping them safe is one of the community's top priorities. I do see a lot of people, both students and non-students, using the crosswalk. I've been at this school 23 years and pedestrian safety has always been an issue along the Waianae coast. You know, in the beginning, I was getting calls up the yin yang about what, um, why did we install these? Um, you know, these are stupid, all of the different kind of things. But overwhelmingly, we receive support from residents. We have to change the culture. We have to change the mindset. And I'm willing to take any political hits to make sure our students and our residents don't get hit crossing our roadways. This is Lexan Butai Joseph from Waianae High School for Hiki No. Thank you. Next, from the island of Maui, students at HP Baldwin High School tell about a movement to reduce the amount of hazardous fishing line that gets discarded into our oceans. We look out into the ocean and we're like, wow, it's beautiful. But until we look at what's inside, it's very depressing. Contrary to popular belief, single-use plastics are not the sole cause of ocean pollution. Recent UH Hilo graduate Alyssa Martin primarily blames stray fishing lines after interning at the Maui Ocean Center Marine Institute. The Maui Ocean Center Marine Institute, also known as MLCMI, wants to ensure the survival of coral reefs and sea turtles in Hawaii, especially on the island of Maui. The greatest cause of stranding in the main Hawaiian Islands for sea turtles is nearshore fisheries interactions. Each year between 60 and 70 percent of our cases are due to entanglements or sea turtles being hooked. So we knew we had to develop a program to work with fishermen to help um, mitigate those threats. We reach out to local fishermen and just people that are on their beach and we tell them the effects of fishing line and fishing gear that can happen in the water. It's like even in the parking lots, like it's, it's everywhere in the water. We, we dive too um, and we always see it stuck in the rocks too. It's, it's everywhere. Luckily, MOCMI devised a plan to reduce the amount of fishing line in the water. So we installed fishing line recycling bins, which is made out of PVC pipes. I just twist it. I think it might be easier. Okay, it's to ensure that there is uh, less marine debris of monofilament line and fishing gear in our oceans and on the shorelines. And we put it at popular fishing areas. By all means, roll it up and put it in the appropriate trash receptacle or if there's recycling bins available, put it in the recycling bin. The recycling bins have been placed at various popular beaches like Ho'okipa Bay ever since June 2018. We collect it bi-weekly, we collect the line and it gets repurposed and melted down into tackle boxes or other fishing structures. The shocking amount of line collected shows the improvements that are being made regarding ocean pollution. In comparison to this, so the different weights will have different lengths when measured this way. We have collected over 17,000 meters of line, which is also equivalent to about 10.8 miles of fishing line. So the effects of marine debris and the fishing industry is really substantial. Although MOCMI's efforts are helping immensely, they hope that locals also engage in activities such as beach cleanups. The ocean and its marine life doesn't have a voice, and I want to be that advocate for the ocean, and I want to be their, the ocean and its marine life's voice. This is Jem Galapan from Baldwin High School for Hikino. Aloha, I'm Kyla Foster, and we're here in Pukalani on the Kamehameha School's Maui Middle Campus, home of the Warriors. Our technology teacher and Hikino advisor is Mr. Rob Surratt. He has been teaching here at Kamehameha Schools for 16 years. He really enjoys teaching media to his students and loves when the light bulb goes on in their heads. 
One fun fact about Mr. Surratt is that he loves Star Wars, maybe good. too much. He has collectibles and items all over the place. I mean, although liking everything about Star Wars is cool, there are times when he takes things a bit too far. No the following story from Kamehameha School's Maui Middle is about our poi mill and how it not only makes poi, but also serves our students and our community as well. Kumu Hokuao believes that by learning about taro, or kalo in Hawaiian, Native Hawaiian students will know more about their culture. Part of the Aina-based educational components here, as well as sustainability, is to um, ensure that haumana know where the food is coming from and how to prepare that food, especially when it is uh, a traditional food crop like kalo, and the relationship that we have with kalo genealogically, spiritually, and culturally. Native Hawaiians believe the taro plant to be sacred as they are descendants of this plant. Though poi is an important part of their diet, having it on a regular basis can be quite expensive. So currently, while we are starting to expand our growth of uh, cultivation of kalo here uh, on campus in Aapuel, we are currently working with uh, different community farms located in Keanai, Wailuanui, and in the Nawaiha region. With these kalo coming in from various areas on the island, Kumuhokuao believes that it's important for native Hawaiians to learn how the aina, or land, sustains cultures. Um, you know, we're genealogically, spiritually, and culturally connected to this plant, and so it's really important for students to have engagement in, in all aspects of this crop, from planting, to cooking, to milling, and of course, eating. The process starts by boiling the taro corn, then peeling it, and then cutting it into smaller pieces, so it's easier to pound into poi. About 175 pounds of, of poi for one lunch, uh, one, one meal. If we were to have to buy that poi and say, you know, $7 a pound, we're talking about a, a lot of money for just that one particular meal. Being able to get a poi mill was the answer to all Kumuhokuao's problems. So this machine is called a La Milpa Poi Grinder. Uh, this company, La Milpa, has been around for about 100 years here in the United States. And um, it is basically a large commercial grain grinder of sorts. And um, somewhere in the last you know, couple of decades, it was found that it could be utilized for milling poi. Kumuhokuao believes that the Hawaiian culture will continue to grow and thrive with continued education and support of kalo. If we can support taro farmers who don't have the ability to mill their own poi but are willing to sell their kalo, um, it's a lot better for us to, to one, support our farmers and buying kalo directly from them, and secondly, the student engagement in the processing of, of the kalo into poi. So it's kind of a win-win for us. We're reducing costs but at the same time uh, engaging haumana and supporting farmers. This is Ivalani Kiawekane from Kamehameha Maui Middle School for Hikino. We're here on the campus of Kalheo High School in Windward, Oahu. Our media teacher and Hikino advisor is Mrs. Kathy Shigimura. She's been a teacher here at Kalaheo for 27 years. She loves Snoopy and decorates her classroom walls with posters of this famous character. She is also proud of her full-blooded Unchinanchu heritage. In her spare time, she takes koto lessons, learning to play classical Okinawa music on the instrument. The following story from Kalaheo High School on Oahu showcases a nonprofit organization that provides positive direction for Hawaii's youth. Yeah, because it's biting too much on one side, that's why it's crooked and it'll get stuck. While like many that. young adults find the direction they need in high school, Kinaeha, a nonprofit organization, is here to help when high school fails. Kinai Eha provides education, job opportunities, and workforce training for youth that are homeless, high school dropouts, incarcerated, or looking for guidance. The program is located in Olamana on the windward side of Oahu, working to empower young adults that society may have turned their back on, and put them on track to be successful and contributing members of society. Some of the mentors here experienced hardships in their own life when they were young, and want a chance to steer others in the right direction. Um, I had my father really, he, he was a policeman for 32 years, so he was my mentor and uh, I always looked up to him. A lot of these kids don't have fathers and if they do, they're, they're not really up to par. So, uh, you know, I try my best to be a role model to them so they get something at least to 
look at. Sometimes at least eight hours of the day, they can come here and look up to somebody and feel good about themselves. And yeah, I try to be. While at Kinai Eha, young adults between ages 14 and 26 learn construction and other trades, as well as have the opportunity to earn their GED. I've been to prison, I've been to Oklahoma prison, I've been to Halawa at least six times. So I know it's not the right place, it's not a good place to be. And uh, I just try to make these kids understand that you don't, that's, not, that's a bad route. You know, their parents are going there or were there, and it's just not any place for any human being, especially the children of Hawaii. Oh, you gotta come back, right there. Okay, perfect. No matter their past, all the mentors here do their best to make a positive impact on Hawaii's youth. The kids is like me when I was young. Yeah. I think um, most of the mentors here are going to be in that same position. Yeah. So we uh, we grew up hard-headed and grew up kind of on the streets doing stupid street things and um, and then being able to become successful in in a in a world where you have to um, you got to be law-abiding, you know, and all that stuff. And seeing the kids transition from where they are doing stupid street things into becoming law-abiding, productive members of society. That's, that's pretty much what drives it, yeah. Kinai Eha is a community that works to better not only themselves, but each other as well. I think we have a good blend because everybody has the same purpose here. Um, you go to other schools, you go to other programs, you go to other universities. Everybody's there for their own purpose and everybody has different purposes. Here, everybody has a common purpose, yeah, and that's to extinguish pain. Yeah, and that's to make a better life for all of us together as a team. They're, all, they're really good guys. They're nice, they're respectful, you know. And uh, I know they all, they all can uh, contribute to society. We just got to give them a chance. This is Kehalani Bringus from Kalaheo High School for Hiki No. Well, we've come to the end of this episode of Hiki No. Remember, all of these stories were written, shot, and edited by students like us. We hope you've enjoyed watching them as much as we've enjoyed sharing them with you. Be sure to tune in next week for more proof that Hawaii students Hiki No can do. Broadcasts of Hiki No are made possible by the support of viewers like you. Mahalo! And by Bank of Hawaii Foundation, investing in Hawaii's future by promoting collaboration, critical thinking, and other 21st century skills through Hiki No. Kamehameha Schools, empowering Hawaiian keiki to explore, discover, and inspire. ABC Stores, a local company helping to transform education and develop Hawaii's workforce through bold learning initiatives like Hiki no.